Good evening. Good evening, everybody. It is Monday night, the night before the elections. So it should be an interesting week ahead of us, but let's not think about that right now. I'm Danielle <laughs> Tucker. I'm a singer. I am a vocal coach and I'm a lead singer with the Mighty Untouchables Band. And I will soon be the host of the Pandemic Proof Singer Summit, which is coming up November 16th, 17th, and 18th. So if you are a singer in any capacity and you're looking for some direction for next year, this is definitely something you'll want to check out. You can just look up Pandemic Proof Singer Summit on Facebook, join the Facebook group, and we'll keep you posted there. But um, during the summit, we're going to be learning how to earn money through multiple streams of income. We're going to be talking about growing your fan base through social media and all kinds of different platforms. And um, we're going to just talk about taking care of ourselves in general as singers. So without further ado, let me introduce you to my wonderful guest tonight. This is Sarah Ingram. She is a singer songwriter here in San Diego. Um, she currently performs contemporary jazz and top 40 music all throughout San Diego and North County area area. Um, Sarah, what have you been up to lately? The last time I saw you was uh, at the Grand Del Mar. We were both yes. at our respective gigs and, and we were just in it and doing our thing. And then <laughs> here That's we are right. today. <laughs> That's right. So what have I been doing during the pandemic? Well, so luckily uh, I haven't been able to do any, play any gigs, but I have been able to keep all my students and that's a, a pretty decent chunk of my income. So yeah. I have been able virtually to... or yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Yeah. And that's been fun. And I have a lot of kids. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's been fun. Well, it's been a challenge actually at first learning being able to teach piano and voice um, on uh, FaceTime or on Zoom, and especially with kids, but um, it, it's working. It's working yeah. out fine, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that's what I've been mostly doing. And, um, you know, honestly, it's been a great time. You know, at first we hate it when everything shuts down, but it just, it really forced me to have to look inside myself and Say, well, what, what do you really want to do? If you're not, if there's nothing going on around you, I mean, what is it that you would do? And mm -hmm. um, for a while, I just stared at the wall. <laughs> then, after time, you know, I was kind of like, oh, I started writing, you know, I was kind of just trying stuff. And so it's been good that way, mm -hmm. you know, because sometimes, at least for my personality and that as a performer, we just are so into what's going on outside of us and, you know, Mm, that's true. We measure ourselves pretty much, you know, how many gigs do I have and am I, where are my gigs and, yeah, you know, so right. sometimes when all that gets taken away, you just have to see yourself. You have to face those disgusting <laughs> feelings and yes. deal with them. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's, yeah. Well, I always keep saying, you know, it's like cleaning, you know, it's like, oh, I'm going to clean that cupboard over there. And then well, either you open it up and it's like, uh oh, there's like dead animals in there, or <laughs> you clean it and then the next thing next to it is like dirty now, right? It just shows up what else is <laughs> needs to. So, yeah, you know, sometimes you, it's been a good way to look at things and definitely and, see what's um, important. Yeah, definitely. Um, you mentioned right before we came on that things are starting to pick up a little bit and you're seeing little glimpses of gigs coming back around. Um, what do you have on the horizon? Well, I'm excited for the up and coming, the Corona Cella San Diego event. It's going to be a, a live stream event all day on Sunday, November 15th. And it's featuring lots of wonderful local singer songwriters. Um, and I'm going to be singing just like two of my original songs and then one uh, Indian song as well. So I'm pretty excited about that because I haven't, for, after I did my album, I kind of stopped being a singer songwriter and just said, you know what, I'm not going to be an artist anymore. I'm just, not just, but I'm just, I'm going to sing jazz and top 40 and stuff like that. And that's just what I'm going to do and not try to be, I don't know, for some reason, I just thought I shouldn't be an artist. You know, we all go through that. <laughs> you know, how artists are pretty, pretty, um, um, critical, self-critical. Mm -hmm. And um, 
so it's been, and then now it just kind of shifted for me and I realized, no, I can, you know, you can do everything. And it's not bad. Like I learned so much running bands, my, you know, having to like put together a duo or, oh, now we're going to do a trio and, oh, no, oh, we get to have a four piece. So how is that going to, you know, and just learning how to run that has been really huge. It's, it's, it's changing my whole approach to how I would approach, you know, perform my own original music. So, yeah, definitely. So, you know, everything happens for a reason. Yeah. I needed to do, learn that stuff, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And just the, um, the quantity of gigs that you do, uh, how that conditions you and just kind of gets mm -hmm. you in the, the flow and just kind of prepares your, your body, your mind, your voice for, um, something more artistic, you know, and I think that's, yeah. you know, that's a really, really good point. Um, we were also talking before we started just about how awkward it is to not be singing as much right now. And I yeah. had some gigs here and there. I had one on Sunday and I just walked away shaking my head thinking, ah, where am I? <laughs> where am I? <laughs> where did my performer go? Where did my voice go? Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah, it is. I, I was going to say, yes, don't not sing for weeks or months and then <laughs> sit in your bed, like sitting and then try to start singing these long phrases. <laughs> There's this song, I was like, oh no, I can't even finish the phrase. What am I going to do? And then it was like, dude, come on, just wait till tomorrow, stand up, <laughs> maybe warm up. That might be a concept. <laughs> That's my favorite way to torture myself is to not warm up at all. And then like, oh, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> it's like, you gotta warm up, <laughs> no matter no matter what, <laughs> no matter how long you've been singing yeah, or not, yeah. right? And, and I think it's it has something to do with the energy too, because you know when you're when you're performing, you know, real frequently, obviously we we always have that energy, nervousness, whatever you want to call it. Yes. You know, it's adrenaline going, yeah. and I think our bodies kind of get accustomed to that, and and our uh, we learn how to, our minds learn how to cope with it and, and we can stay clear and, you know, get our business done. But I'm yep. finding right now that my body and my mind are not familiar with this sensation right now. And so when it comes, exactly. time, it's so weird. And, and my mind is just not like responding to like, hmm, lyrics in front of me. What do those lyrics say? <laughs> <laughs> Remember those notes you practiced all week long? Where did those go? You know, it's just, it's oh dear. <laughs> My first show is going to be like in front of a bunch of peers, which is the thing that makes me the most nervous, right? Oh my gosh. And I haven't We're performed. The same boat though. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I haven't performed since March 13th, I don't think. So yeah. Oh, well, I guess you're um, right. We are in the same boat. We'll just be like, let's hobble ourselves along here. Yeah. <laughs> Try to make it through. Yeah, it'll be great to see everybody. So yeah. let's talk a little bit more about that gig. So where can, um, where will it be streaming from Facebook or where can we access it? Yes, um, I believe, um, I think if you check into Corona Cella San Diego on Facebook, and um, I'm, I would imagine they'll be providing a link to view or some, you know, way to buy it to, you know, or, and then to donate money mm -hmm. to, it's to help um, everybody who's struggling, that's not working, everybody's not working, all the musicians and songwriters aren't working. So yeah. just a way to help uh, support them, mm -hmm. us. And uh, so, yeah, they should be um, putting a link on Facebook, I would imagine. Okay, cool. And are you all actually performing on location? Or are you performing from your own spaces? Yes, that's going to be the fun, most fun oh, part. Oh, yeah. I know. We actually get to see the people. I get to actually see people. So I don't know how people are, but I'm going to want to hug everybody, yeah. <laughs> which I'm not sure if everybody's down with that or not. But yeah. it's going to be at the dance headquarters, and it's um, on Shaw Line Street in San Diego. And I guess we'll be on a, like the low, on the loading dock. Mm -hmm. So we'll be somewhat outside-ish. Mm -hmm. um, and we are going to um, model perfect COVID safety measures as far as, you know, we're all going to be wearing masks and mm -hmm. everybody's going to be distanced. And so that's also the other point of it is just to show that we, you can put on a safe mm -hmm. um, um, live show. Mm -hmm. But yeah, but yeah, so all the, but all just the musicians would be there, but nobody else, no yeah. audience members, unfortunately. 
Yeah. And are you going to perform solo or are you playing with somebody? I'm going to play, um, I'm going to play and sing. And then I have Harley Magsino on bass and he plays with a, a lot of the other people too. So he'll be there. And I have a tabla player named um, Miles Shrewsbury. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it'll be kind of like a trio. Cool. Tell me again what it is that you're, you said you were going to perform two original songs. Uh-huh. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So a few, um, so again, like I said, for so many years, I've just ignoring my album and um was just you know doing regular gigs and so i have it's not on any of my social media but i need to now it's time to so my if you want to find my album it's on spotify mm -hmm. under um, sarah ingram mm -hmm. and it's called human um but yeah so that's i need to update all that kind of stuff yeah. so i'm going to do two songs off of there and then um off of the album and then um there's a an indian song that's really beautiful yeah. that we are going to perform as well. Cool. Well, speaking of that, let's talk a little bit about your musical history and upbringing because um, you were a voice and harpsichord major. I didn't know that you were a harpsichordist. So yes. uh, how did um, how did your interest in that come to be? How, how were you raised up musically? I was raised, so my mom was a p wonderful pianist and um, my dad played and sang for fun. Um, so then of course I was put in, in piano lessons early on. Mm -hmm. And then in high school, I was really into, you know, I got into choir and madrigals and singing. I, I also sang professionally. I had a voice teacher in La Jolla and then she would do Andrew Sisters. We'd go sing at parties and, oh, yeah. and different kind of things like that. And then um, when I was going to, uh, I went to UC Santa Cruz. I think my first quarter I was at UCSD. And then I actually saw somebody had a harpsichord and I became obsessed with harpsichord. And it was just something about Baroque music in particular was really, really got me. So yeah, so I ended up, um, so okay, I'm gonna major in harpsichord and, um, and also in voice. Mm -hmm. So I did both. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I thought that was, I just enjoyed it a lot. Yeah. And so you developed an interest in um, Indian music and, uh, and um, Japanese music, right? Did you actually travel abroad or did you just kind of yes. uh, look in? So that's what happened. So then I ended up, I finished college and then I was just dying to travel basically. Um, and one of my friends was going to Japan to teach mm -hmm. English and make money and it was, you could really make good money then. And um, so I said, oh, okay, well, we'll just, I'll go and make some money and then come back. Mm -hmm. And well, so then I left and I never came back. <laughs> I um, went to Japan, um, where, uh, oh, my cat's gonna about ready to scream. Um, <laughs> she's old. Um, so I went there and started studying Japanese harp and, and there's just a big, I'm gonna get her, a big community of, of um, Westerners, you know, people from Europe and America and Japanese. And it was just, you know, super hippie, artistic, mm -hmm. creative. And so um, we, I studied those things, but then we also did cool fusion-y things. I was in a, um, a bluegrass band where the Japanese guy who played banjo, mm -hmm. and the other, the Japanese people played the Western instruments and then I played koto and sang, and then this other American guy played the shakuhachi, which is the bamboo flute. Okay. And that was interesting. <laughs> so we just had a lot of, did a lot of fun things. And then I was hearing a lot of fusion music there, um, like Shakti and Andreas Vollenweider and different. And that made me kind of very curious about India. Mm -hmm. And then of course, that's kind of what everybody was doing too. You can't, you would go to Japan and it was very interesting to be there, but you'd make money and then you could go travel to India mm -hmm. or Thailand to these other countries that were super cheap. And um, so that's when I became more, I, I, the more I listened to Indian music, I could kind of hear that it was the basis for a lot of our world music or just even our own. Sometimes I'd hear like a New Orleans jazz vibe mm -hmm. or something. So I decided, yeah. oh, I, I want to definitely want to study Indian music as well. Yeah, that's so I lived with a family there actually. Yeah, studied. Okay, come here, Katie. <laughs> <She> <laughs> it's like people, with, this. like people with the children here. Oh, here we go. look Yay. at you. Tina. Okay. <laughs> so 
quiet. <laughs> She'll start screaming bloody murder. Oh, it's okay. Um, yeah, I, I love having this conversation about how the next generation of musicians are being brought up and how they're being exposed to different kinds of music because you know when we went to school like you said you know we had these great music programs available yeah. to us you know in the public yeah. school and you went mm -hmm. through um all you know a, a lot of different elements of music you went through band orchestra choir yes um, yeah all these different oh, i played things. flute i forgot about that yeah oh okay <laughs> yeah <laughs> <Band>. <laughs> Yeah. yeah and then you know and in high school it's a lot of um the foundation is mostly classical music and you know mm -hmm. you're, you're learning um in madrigals and and everything and now there's in the public school system you know music is hardly i mean it, i guess it depends on where you live but right. in, in many many <laughs> regions um yeah. you you don't have any of that and if you mm -hmm. do it seems like in at least for um the voice programs vocal programs and choral programs it's like a uh, show choir and and you know kind of more glee style singing and so right. yeah i'm just really curious your thoughts on um you know how kids are getting exposed to you know a deeper level of understanding of music and being exposed to um more of the things that we benefited from and exactly you know. they're not i think <sighs> we'll see, we'll see. <laughs> they're not being exposed unfortunately like but you know unless they're in the richer neighborhoods and they can actually afford to have private lessons mm -hmm. um yeah, gosh, I remember I had Mrs. Hopkins when I was, you know, rhythm sticks and yes. just all of you it. You brought your know. recorder home and <laughs> yes, yeah, and yeah, the instruments Which the and... parents loved. <laughs> yeah, 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 right. I know. And then they'll ask, you know, you know, I'll say, "Oh, do you sell music?" And they're not like, not really. And I think it's terrible. I think it's too bad. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it stimulates a whole part of your brain that needs to be used. Mm -hmm. I, my theory is, is that it's right brain, left brain together because yeah. it's so mathematical and analytical but it's very feeling and creative it's a beautiful place where both those things can be developed yeah. so it is a pity that they're not getting it and that's another one you know as a voice teacher i was just thinking about that today when you know you get these you probably see this as well where everybody has a different voice and not everybody's got that massive humongous voice and especially when they're a kid you know young and they shouldn't be singing like that you know, unless it's natural, mm -hmm. but you know, you'll get the, I had this one, I have some girls that just have the most beautiful, the very gentle, beautiful voices, and they just need to develop naturally. Mm -hmm. And the parent, you know, back in the day when we were at their home, when I would go to the home, they'd walk by and they're like, she needs to sing louder. Mm -hmm. And this whole, you know, the whole American Idol and these, these, um, not the, you know, they're great shows, but I think they've really pushed that whole concept of just everything's belting. Yeah belting 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 and it's like right yeah. you know and it's like these girls with gorgeous voices and it's like i they might be a belter who knows but like that's not really important right now mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. it's not really about like hey i gotta keep pushing it <laughs> it's like it's like i'm kind of more into like being flexible and um, musical and mm -hmm. yeah. and like letting your voice kind of let your voice develop naturally yeah I just had this conversation with a student the other day because she had um, she had selected a Billie Eilish song to sing. And we talked about the fact that, you know, it it's a predicament for, you know, a voice teacher to really go through, you know, especially with an artist like Billie Eilish, because stylistically to be very, very breathy, very delicate. Um, yeah. that would be correct if you're you know if you're covering Billie Eilish right um, but that's all production though that's really what her foundation is and it and not knocking it at all but right um, but like you said like it just it, music has changed so much that um mm. there really just isn't a, a clear cut like um this is how you do it <laughs> you know right right singers <laughs> and you know that that made me think of the other thing which is back 
you know, when I was a music major, which I, I don't, I hope they're doing it now, but I wish they would have trained us to be a little more mm -hmm. broad, you know, like you're probably not going to be a concert harpsichordist. I mean, that's mm -hmm. a, you know, very, you know, it's, it's a very small percentage of people are, are an opera singer or whatever. Yeah. So let's look at some other things like being in a band or like, how yeah. would you run up? Like, oh, I wish I would have learned all that stuff, you know, yeah, like you're not, and, and you're not just going to be doing weird, artistic, artsy, artsy music all the time, or you're not going to make money off of it. Mm -hmm. Honest to God, you know, yeah. so you probably need to, yeah, like learn, be in a church gig or learn how to play in a, a regular band, you mm -hmm. know? Because they would be so snobby about it, at least my, you know, back, and they were so snobby about jazz of all things, which is kind of, you know, remember it was good enough for jazz, they used to say. Yeah. <laughs> which is really, and now I'm like, what were they talking about? You know, <laughs> jazz is actually one of the more complicated ones, but okay. <laughs> but I, I wish, you know, that, um, I mean, not only in grade school and high school that they get that training, but that even in music school that they would have given a little more of a sense of, mm -hmm to be a working musician you're probably gonna do some recording you're gonna do some teaching mm -hmm. you're probably gonna you want to be in a band that plays music that the majority of humans in the world want to hear <laughs> right yeah yeah but absolutely you're gonna have to play brown eyed girl and it's okay you're not gonna die <laughs> it'll actually be fun because everybody will be so excited <laughs> right yeah. so uh that's a, that's a good point yeah i think and i think just to be a well-rounded you know, vocalist. Um, I mean, I'm always, I'm always very um, grateful that I got the classical training that I got, even though I went down a completely different pathway in life, though. I yeah. like the fact that I know the different dimensions of my instrument and I know what it can do and, you know, how to use it in different capacities. And I think that's imp important for a singer. Not every singer has to, you know, sing opera, but, but you should, um, you should know how, how this thing can work for you. And I think ultimately, if you're kind of kind of go on to be, um, more of an artist, not, not so much a, a working singer, that's going to help you discover, you know, who you are, what your sound is, and what are those like really unique characteristics and, you know, qualities yeah. of your voice. Yeah. Yeah. That's an interesting point. And I, and again, I wish I, I, I mean, it might've been my personality, but my, I was really, you know, studying classical, the, the negative side of it was just, it felt like it was always about technique. It was just always oh, about did you play a wrong note. Did you sing out of tune? And I was just overly obsessed with that. And it, you know, which is in a way is a good thing, mm -hmm. but it was also a hindrance in feeling like being able and and like what you're talking about would be very cool if we you know you learn that but then also like oh let's make some weird noises and mm -hmm. and actually well when you sing this it's okay i mean it's not okay to go flat but i mean there you know we don't have to just be like because my mom would be she's a she'd listen to andrea bocelli you know mm -hmm. and she's like well he is just a little out of tune <laughs> yeah i'm like um, yeah i mean if we all just want to sit there and like really <laughs> you know, it's like well he's really famous and rich so <laughs> he's probably fine yeah he's all right. he's <laughs> but fine. you know that whole mentality where you're just ripping everything to shreds all the time mm -hmm. and yeah. it took me a while and then to shift to a different placement learning how to do the pop placement is different mm -hmm. and then also just you know in, in jazz and then just performing a lot it's yeah you learn to like not be such a freak about everything you know everything yeah. doesn't need to be i mean yeah you want to be good but you don't have to be dying just because you hit a weird note or yeah yeah that's, like, that's so much more help because then you're really like oh you know when you're not afraid of mistakes yeah that's so true my gosh and yeah and i just think uh style wise too when you when you are really like kind of set in that classical technique it's hard it is hard to deviate from that so yeah. you know you really focus on creating a very clean vocal and very just you know all all the right things all the right dynamics and yeah. and everything so it ends up being hard to sound cool you know or right or, yeah exactly you know? yeah like, be kind of gritty you know or something yeah. or like ooh, make a weird noise maybe even you know yeah I or even hit a, like i think that's been the fun part about um, being able to improvise with great jazz players is just that like oh I can go out I can just kind of go off and do something kind of weird and you could even hit a like uh, 
you know, complete dissonance uh-huh. and just sit on it, you know, and then uh-huh. be like, boom, which is super fun, you know, but yeah, coming, when I was coming out, I was so uptight coming out of the, the classical background. It took a while yeah. <laughs> to, yeah. to relax, but I guess that's probably just life. Yeah. So in your teaching practice, um, are, are you teaching a lot of classical music or do you pretty much um, stick to jazz and more contemporaries? Um, it, you know, nowadays, and again, since smartphones, it, it's really changed that kids, so like my piano students pretty much, we follow like the normal um, piano book. I use Faber, um, we follow that. And so the, that's a good kind of a training and the basics. And then I usually let them pick a song that they really like mm-hmm. and, and then for my singers, a lot of them are playing, you know, they learn to play and sing. And so, yeah, they're pretty much just doing pop tunes. Mm-hmm. Nobody wants to do classical music anymore. Yeah. Maybe about it, 10 years ago, at least some of my piano students would still be thinking about like, oh, I want to do a classical piece. And not so much now. Yeah. You know, and I think, yeah, all the singers, no, 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 no classical. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's almost difficult since smartphones, it seems like they almost don't even get the concept of that you kind of have to work at something <laughs> to, do, to actually, you don't just go boop. Oh, I can do that now. Right. Yeah. I used to have this one student. She'd just be like, wanting to watch YouTube videos with me. I'm like, yeah, that's not, I don't think that's what your parents are paying me for <laughs> to watch YouTube videos. <laughs> you know? Oh my gosh. Yeah. I, I feel like, a one of the problems I run into, um, I'll I usually just start with, um, kids that are like 12 and older. I'm just not a, I don't specialize in kids. Let me well, you it. have Let kids put it too, that so way. I probably wouldn't <laughs> no, either. I, I just, kids. I'm not the right, I'm not the right per- person no, for that. They're, so they're I not. usually will start at like 12 or older. And when they're in that more kind of preteen age, just the stuff that's popular right now is so, um, the ranges are so high and just, and, and there's so much production in it that, um, I really want them to choose things that they really, really like, but they come in with these, um, songs that are like in an impossible range, you know, right. And so it's like, it gets tough and you want to, you want to use those like more, I don't know, even like, you know, easier, basic folk songs that have really super simple melody lines and are in a yes. very like comfortable or even a range, princess but... song which aren't that easy but still yeah. it's yeah just like hey well actually we need your voice to actually work from this you know um get it again from this mm-hmm. you know range to this range and let's build your range and mm-hmm. can you actually hit all those notes first and or we're not even mm-hmm. talking about belting we're just saying hit the notes but yeah yeah that's yeah. interesting yeah yeah, that is an interesting point. And all the production. That's always a thing too. Like sometimes they'll say, well, I don't know if this song's good for the piano. And I said, well, if it has a good chord progression, a good melody, then it's fine. You know, it doesn't mm-hmm. matter if it's an electric, you know, like Green Day songs back in the day, you know, mm-hmm. even though they're like a punk pop band, like they're great, yeah. you know, because they have great melodies and, um, you know, and even Taylor Smith, although she can, I mean, Taylor, what's her Swift. name? Swift. <laughs> Taylor Swift. <laughs> <laughs> well she can be pretty rangy is she can, yeah some of the young girls they can't sing that low like below middle yeah. c yeah yeah you know then it gets all high yeah and i think it, i think it too also has a lot to do with like like we were talking about before is just they're so they're they're exposed to such different things now and i think that the the things that they're listening to also are more more adult than what we maybe had been listening to as kids or I don't know, everybody's different. Everybody's different, but especially with really young, um, especially young females, uh, they really want to emulate these adult voices that they're hearing and they're not listening to other children singing or other kids their age. And so they really want to push for this like sound. Right. And a um, mature sound. And it's mm -hmm. like your, your whole voice isn't even there yet. Like it's not going to be there. We don't really know what your voice is going to sound like until what in your twenties or something until yeah. everything kind of kicks in. Oh gosh. And the worst part of the lyrics. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And they don't, and I'm just like cringing like, Oh, and then you realize that I asked one of the moms and I'm like, is that okay? And she's like, Oh, she doesn't even know what it's about. 
Uh, <laughs> yeah. I said, well, that's even worse in a way, but okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, you know, like for example, I, I mean, those the, all the princess songs are great, or Disney songs are so great, and that they're kind of um, challenging. But you know, oh, I wouldn't want to do a princess song. Well, yeah, yeah. It's like, well, try singing, it, honey. That is yeah. not that easy. <laughs> Yeah, the and I think the other thing too is, um, and I swear I am not bagging on current music at all. I love it. No, I, get I listen it. I get to it. it. It's yeah. more a matter of, I'm I'm kind of like ranting about um, how do you how do you guide a vocalist through you right. know, such yeah. different different things. But um, what always gets me is the indie pop pronunciations of words oh gosh. now oh, oh my gosh i uh, I, I can't even do it i've no. tried to say the words myself and i think it's, <laughs> it is it's that rigid like <laughs> classical training so i cannot bend my vowels like in that no, direction you're a, pop, you're a great pop singer so it's not <laughs> like you're all like Ooh, you know oh they do that weird thing they're like nah, or something they do like hey i'm like oh god don't do that yeah it just bugs me and then yeah and I really I that's been a big point of contention with the younger I'm like don't start doing these weird stylized things because it's not you like just keep right. it you know I'm not saying you have to sound classical but just keep it neutral yeah you know don't yeah. start that because then you won't be able to get rid of it if you ever want to yes. get rid of it yeah. right like yeah. that's something you choose to do that later mm -hmm. and they're in a stuff. little bit of denial about it too because I'll like I, I can't, I can't even say how they were pronounced like the word. I know. Okay. I can't do it, but it would be very I try different. sometimes. <laughs> it's no way you would in no way speak it this right. way. And I right. try to say that I'm like, speak the word love, like tell, tell me how you would say it in a conversation. And then they say it. And then we go back to the song. And they're oh yeah, and I'm, they're like, like love. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a weird vowel thing. I'm like, yeah, it, you know, and you well, what you can tell them is say, you know what, this is going to be so 2020. Uh, yeah, you know, someday 20 years from now, you're going to be like, oh gosh, that's so like ooh, dated. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully it will be. I don't know. I grew up like you know 70s 70s carol king and mm -hmm. elton john and those are those are my first two albums actually yeah the tapestry album but you know good old yeah or even all the classic rock yeah even the screaming um that was always my brother's big thing like i'd do something and he'd be like well could you scream more that'd be really cool if you could just scream more <laughs> like, yeah. well, I, don't, I can't do the screaming but <laughs> yeah no, I know. And that was a, you know, we had that era of music where the vocalists were, you know, really, um, they were really powerful, really clean vocalists. Like we had Barbara Streisand, we yeah. had like, you know, Whitney Houston and, and yeah. uh, I, I don't know. Mariah Carey. Mariah Carey and Anita Baker and just all of these, you know, the, the vocal, like, was the thing it wasn't the production yeah. of the vocal no the vocal was the thing and yeah. it was the same with the male singers too even all the yeah. way through like the even all the way through like the hair metal thing my my husband is total metal guy yeah and so he you know he talks a lot about the fact that you know a lot of a lot of those guys were like were opera singers or they or they were they were um trained you Classically know trained. oh that's true yeah yeah and pat yeah. benatar was like that i guess yeah uh, this yeah. reminded me yeah like yeah, her mom let her go swimming mm -hmm. and yeah so then they turned into rock singers yeah mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah yep yeah interesting it, well it'll it'll be really really interesting to see how you know music and vocals kind of evolve over time because you know while um <clears throat> while while they don't have maybe the same like exposure to things we listen to things we were able to practice with something else is taking its place so you know yeah. maybe it's a technology um which is a good thing you know mm -hmm. i mean it's it's just it's just a progression of things but um but it'll be so weird to yeah to see. 
Luckily, I've seen a lot of some of my students, the kids, luckily their parents play that music. Oh, yeah. and you know, I have to give it to Glee. Glee has been yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. Back all the tunes because my, you know, students will just be like, oh, I want to learn Don't Stop Believing. I'm like, well, how'd you hear that? Oh, on Glee. You know, everything they've heard, <laughs> all the old tunes they heard on Glee. That's so true. So I was like, well, thank you, Glee. Mm -hmm. and, and then thank you to parents who, you know, and I mean, it's not like everybody has to, but it's nice when they do. So I have some teenagers, but that, you know, they just, they're doing like Heart and Elton John and stuff like that. So I'm always, I'm always thrilled about that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Although I did just, one, one girl started doing some Radiohead songs and I'm like, Ooh, I, have oh, you heard of these? Okay. <laughs> lovely. He has a lovely voice, but it's very soft and gentle. Yeah. So, so yeah, cool. there's some good ones in there, but yeah, that weird pronunciation thing drives me up the wall. Mm -mm. <laughs> I, can't, I cannot with that. <laughs> I need like a, I need like a, uh, a vowel chart or something to like help me, uh, decipher, you know, what, what am I hearing here? I know, I know it's like this weird, <laughs> it's like, a, uh, it's, there's something bizarre. It is I keep trying to do it, but I can't, I can't either. <laughs> like, I want to do this. But I don't. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, you know, my, uh, my daughters are six and eight. And of course, you know, they, they love music and, and they, they'll listen to whatever, you know, I play for them and they're not, I think they're starting, they're starting to pick up on more of the like really current pop and electronic music from like, um, YouTube videos and stuff that they watch. Right. So, you know, so they're into that. Um, but they, uh, you know, I love when they have a good response to some things that, you know, that I'll play for them. And, and, and it's really interesting to, to see like the things that do appeal to them, you exactly. know, like the different voices and stuff. Oh, I'm, I'm getting ready for a show. And, and one of the songs is, um, love the one you're with. Oh, and nice. My youngest daughter, we're in the car and she, she, she always, she keeps saying, play the Eagle fly song. Play the Eagle Aww. fly. <laughs> Oh, that's sweet. Yeah, yeah, they're fun. Yeah, it is cool to see what kind of hits them and what has a universal appeal. Yeah. And maybe just what phase they're in where suddenly they can actually, it hits them and they can hear it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, that's a funny thing too. Have you noticed when, or maybe you already start them at that age, but there's this weird, they go from being little girl, let's say with girls, and little girls at about 11, 12, and then suddenly they just go, and their music um, tastes change immediately. They go from just being like normal, whatever. And then suddenly they just go into alternative. <laughs> Have you seen it's that happen? 12. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, when they suddenly turn 12. Like, oh, oh, that's baby music. And now I'm yes. going to do this. And that's sometimes it's like really cool. And then <laughs> or sometimes it's like, oh gosh, that's not appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> it, it really comes out in the personalities too, because I, I have had, you know, these younger girls, you know, you, you work with them from the time they're eight, nine, 10 years old or something yeah. like that. And then they turn 12 and it's like, yeah, who are you? I know. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly they're all like outfits. And then I remember yeah. how I used to have like 10 different outfits a day too. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh yeah, that seems like a lot of work, but um, <laughs> they're all like coming in the hair and this and everything. <laughs> And then, yeah, suddenly the music taste is just completely different. Yep. Yep. Cause you got to start being cool at that age. You have to. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Makes sense. Yeah. Well, so, so speaking of into the future, um, how is, how's 2021 looking for you? Are you even thinking ahead like that? Or just as, as a, um, professional musician, you know, how are you? <sighs> approaching this coming year gig wise and what what your thoughts are on what you're going to be doing you know i'm very much of a kind of intuitive in the flow person i mean i do love a schedule and i love logistics and all those mm -hmm. kind of things i'm not you know but um i haven't you know honestly like i was saying earlier i up until almost a month ago i was just almost i felt pretty hopeless actually and um I just wasn't sure. I wasn't feeling inspired. I didn't, you know, I just thought, well, what, but then I have this thing where 
because I have quit a couple times in my life. Um, and now it's kind of like, you know what, you don't get to quit anymore because I know for sure that I want to be an 80 year old who's like playing and singing and, you know, a happy, healthy, and like out there, out and about and having a good time. Mm -hmm. So it's like, well, you, you, then that's who you're gonna, you need to move into that. And so I think now what I finally learned at this late age is that I love music. I love performing and just deal with the, the heart, the, the difficulty of it, the rejection, you know, when you're, or your insecurities about it, deal with them. It's okay. Just, I'm finally learning to just enjoy the process, mm -hmm. kind of treat it like a, not a religion, but just, you know, treat it like your, it's like your thing you do. Yeah. And uh, you're not doing it to get a record deal or be famous, or it's just, you do it because that's what you do and you love it. It makes you happy. Mm -hmm. And the more you do it and the more you perform, then the, you know, the better you'll, you'll get. So to answer your question though, as far as I have nothing in particular lined up, except, you know, one agency contacted me about Sikwan um, or Sikwan. And, um, but, but what happened in this last month was suddenly everything started to kind of hit as far as, oh, you can be creative again and you can, you can be a writer again. And I'm working on my writing with the teeth, you know, with a mentor and, um, which is great. So yeah, I'm feeling a lot more positive and just more connected and that I can, yeah, and keep going. And I'm just gonna, I, I believe things will start to fall where they need to. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not gonna stress about it. Cause li like I said, I'm, I'm making, I make a decent amount of my income from teaching. Mm -hmm. So I'm not like, I mean, it's not great. I and mean, we're still suffering, but it's not like my whole income was gigs. So, right. Right. So yeah. it's kind of okay. Uh, good. If that was, did I answer your question? Yeah, <laughs> you definitely did. You definitely did. And that's, I think that's a great, you know, outlook. It's, it's a, a good way to look at things. And I really think that that's been the silver lining in all of this for many of us is that you really, you're just forced to kind of look at your priorities and why you do things mm -hmm. and what, what you're doing and for who you're doing it for. Right. Um, we've kind of just been like stripped down to that core, you know, that core yeah. place. And, and, um, I think I'm, I'm like you where I think, uh, yes, I would like things to go back to the way they are. I, oh my God, I miss the band so much. Oh, I it's bet crazy. you do. Just, Cause you guys have such a family. Uh, it's a beautiful family thing, right? Yeah. And it just, oh, it breaks my heart every day, but I know we'll be back together soon. Um, but it's, I think the thing that I have really discovered the most is just you just can't put so much stock in those external things. Like, just like you said, like as musicians, we really tend to get all of that affirmation and validation from outside based on, you know, um, how many gigs, how right. many fans, how many um, likes, you know, all of those yeah. things. And that, yeah. um, you, you know, during this time, um, so much of that has been stripped away and you really have to, um, ask yourself like, well, how am I, how am I gonna like move forward in life and with that, without those things, but be able to generate it, you know, within myself. Right. Know? And, and not that you won't ever get external affirmation, you know, ever again, but, but right. you've just, you've got to find it somewhere in you. Um, and, and that has just really led me to just want to be creative, you know, and whether it's, singing songwriting or you know working on projects like this um and just yeah. being with other you know talking with other creative people um mm -hmm. that's really the thing that i think is kind of keeping the boat afloat for me <laughs> oh that's yeah that's great yeah so what i do want to find out about more what you're doing because um but and i just wanted to include in there i think what's happened for all of us too is that we appreciate each other so much more i mean what an yeah. equalizer right yeah before it was like oh well, this person's too busy I, I can never send them a message because they're just so busy and important mm -hmm. and blah you know and now it's like well we're all you know like mm -hmm. i um nathan hubbard was sweet he transferred some old the, the vhs um tapes of my indian show mm -hmm. And it was funny. I was, and I said, oh, well, so how much do you charge? And he just laughed at me. <laughs> like, you know, we all know we're not working. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right? I was like, 
you know, we can't say, well, I have so many gigs, you know, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I'm too busy. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> we all know we're not, you're not busy. <laughs> so, yeah. So you're, so you're working on this, which is wonderful. I think it's amazing. And then you're, and you're also doing some writing too. You know what? I haven't done a lot of writing. Um, yeah. You know, uh, Mark, my partner in the band, he he's a great writer and he and he writes all the time and he's always, you know, bragging about his royalty checks. And I like and I fully he, he deserves it. You know, he yeah. puts in that work all the time. And he has, you know, he has um, asked me so many times and I just I don't know. I just didn't it's something I wanted to do during this time, but I just didn't yeah. do a lot of it, but it's, you know, well, me neither. I didn't, I didn't feel any, I mean, honestly, I've just been like a, then I started writing poetry and just writing, okay, I'm just going to write whatever the heck I feel like. And like really weird and dark mm -hmm. stuff, <laughs> you know, just like, okay. Yeah. Like again, not having to worry about any kind of an audience, just like, well, what the hell, what, what, what do you actually think, you know, yeah. <laughs> about everything. And, um, but yeah, I've had the same, but, and it's like, no, I need to start writing and I'm, I'm actually quite blocked, mm -hmm. but luckily the mm -hmm. person I'm working with, it's cause it's, you have to get to your true spot. Mm -hmm. And I realize there's a lot of stuff I've been, you know, hiding from or not dealing with. So yeah. you can't just like pretend like, Oh, I'm just going to write this, you know, I mean, professional songwriters can do that. I guess they yeah. know how to like, Oh, I'm just going to write a song in the style of such and such and mm -hmm. make it about this, but like to actually write from your own, heart and soul yeah sometimes it's like oh dear <laughs> <laughs> right dig in there can i say that <laughs> yeah <laughs> we're like oh oh what is in that cupboard actually <laughs> that's been my yeah. that's been my my big image that and, and also excavating like what are you gonna find when you start excavating mm -hmm. yeah and maybe it's not always pleasant yeah. <laughs> and that's scary to sing about a bunch of personal stuff like yeah you know yeah. So. I know I, I get that. I get that block too. I think it's more of that, like, um, just that not being able to get past those thoughts of, um, you know, what, what, what will other people think about this or right. this, the sound and the style and, uh, and is it, is it commercial enough? Is it, you know, all right. of these, all of these. And it actually shouldn't, things. I just realized, found out uh, that's been my big stumbling block too. And I just found out that's not what you should be writing for at all. Right. You should never be thinking mm -hmm. about, unless again, you're a professional, like mm -hmm. if you're just writing as your own person, then, mm -hmm. and that's really stuck me too. I'm like, Oh, I like this person's style. Oh, I want to sound like that. Mm -hmm. It's like, but that's not your true thing. But mm -hmm. I think it, it does help to have some guidance. Yeah. Yeah. Well, tell I me about another, your mentorship. Uh, pardon? You said you were working with a mentor writing? Well, I'm working with Josh Weinstein, actually. Oh, Josh. Okay. The, awesome. My good buddy. I, I love him. He's yeah. just been a really, I, I hired him for the first time last December for a gig. I just uh -huh. kind of saw him on Facebook and I'm like, oh, I need more keyboard players. And mm -hmm. he seems really smart and funny and everything. So I hired him. Um, we did a gig at Rancho Bernardo, just background. And we just hit it off, you know, and mm -hmm. it's just like one of those kind of people that you're like, oh, thing, you know, yeah. wake up. And um, so, and I teach his children. And uh, so anyway, he's a great writer. Oh my gosh. I don't know if you've ever heard his lyrics, uh, his songs, but he's a really great writer. Yeah. That doesn't surprise me. He, he's a great guy. And he, he just, he is so like um, smart and witty and, you know, yeah. so that's, that's yeah. Very, and his, very his uh, songwriting's great. So yeah, that's been, it's, it's actually helpful to have some kind of guidance because I'll just spin out yeah. every time and I'll overthink everything every time. Like I'm already making everything way too complicated. <laughs> and then one of my students was just, just learned um, the long and winding road. Yeah. And I'm looking at the lyrics like, well, these are pretty simple. It's not like you have to come up with any fancy pants words or anything, right. but like, just how do you, oh, and what I was going to say though, what probably is a problem for both of us is that in a way, when you start, when you know, not that I know too much, but the more professional. So when I was younger, we just didn't think, you know, remember, you know, when you see young people, they're just like C chord, like, yeah, you know, and just, and they're just into it. And, you know, you can just sing whatever. And it's like, wow, this is amazing. Mm -hmm. But now when you, the more and more music you play and you probably, your, your critic is a little more 
Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, well, that's, well, that's too simple. I don't, I don't know about that. That's too simple. And yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> you know, too much. <laughs> yeah. Whereas when I was younger, I'd just be like, oh, this is the most amazing thing ever. And like your inner critic, my inner critic was in this, I could just do it and not worry about it because it was me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now it's like, oh, <laughs> this isn't, this yeah. isn't good enough and it's not clever enough. So well, it's, it's a cool process to kind of peel back the onion layers of that now. And, you know, yeah, exactly. Exactly. That. Yeah. Well, like I said, you know, getting older, it's just kind of like, well, this is going to be like, it's like therapy. It's mm-hmm. like, it's like, don't worry about, you know, creating some great, amazing thing. Just, just start the process and, and, you know, if nothing else, it'll be a, a way to express yourself. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah. but. Oh, well, you've inspired me that, that encourages me to. Oh, good. Yes. No, I want you to everybody to know I've been a big toad on the couch, staring at the wall for months on end. Some days I didn't brush my hair for days. Sometimes <laughs> I just had a haircut. That's the only reason why my hair is down. <laughs> so, yeah. Cause I mean, I think, I mean, it's great. A lot of people have been busy through the whole thing, but mm-hmm you know, it's okay if you weren't. And I just want everybody to know that I was not, <laughs> you know, I'm not going to say like, oh yeah, I just did all these amazing things during, mm-hmm. it's just, I had, sometimes you just have to be quiet for a while and then, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. then the voice, something will hit you. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So yes, yeah. just do our thing. And again, we don't have to worry. <laughs> no, we don't. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody's paying us anyway. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> What would it matter anyway? <laughs> yeah. right oh my God. I'm so sad. Oh man. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm so glad to hear that, um, you have the Corona Cella coming up and mm-hmm. your Saquon stuff and, and things are going to start picking up and, um, you know, we'll be, uh, we'll be back at it again pretty soon. We will. Yeah, we will. Yeah. I so, think, you know, the main problem is just, unfortunately, we, we never had a, a cohesive, viewpoint about how to approach it and you know because it looks like in australia they're down to back down to one case or something yeah. but yep so if everybody could just get on board and do the same thing that would be super helpful but that would so be super helpful. that's obviously been a problem but it's also you know we're seeing that it's spiking everywhere mm-hmm. every you know as everybody's trying to open up it's spiking but mm-hmm. well we'll get it together we'll get we it will. together it, it'll all it'll be okay yep we're gonna be okay we're going to be okay for sure. <laughs> and like I said, I've gotten to meet and, and get to um, connect with so many great people that, you know, if we had just continued with our lives, you know, we would have connected, we connected, you know, mm-hmm. musically, but it's just nice to know that we're all in this together. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And, you know, yeah. And I do feel so much closer to everybody just sort of naturally, mm-hmm. you know, me too, me too. And I, and I think that's really, that's been one of the, you know, driving things like with doing this is just that, you know, I, I, I do think it's important that everybody be able to get a glimpse behind the curtain of what everyone is doing, because when you are in such a awkward time and space in your life, it can be so isolating and, you know, and the, the mental, you know, thing that that can do on you. But when you can see for your own eyes that your peers, mm-hmm. that your, you know, everybody that's in your community is um, in a similar situation. Everybody's handling it differently too. Some people right. are being, you know, real, real busy and just, you know, um, doing all the things. And then others are, you know, being more still, more quiet, more reflective, more, you know, in their own, in their own way. And some are, you know, in a corner in the fetal position. Which is- <laughs> Mine too, you know, whatever, <laughs> whatever works. You know? Exactly. <laughs> You're doing okay. It's going to be all right. So, yeah. Aww. Well, it's funny because we're artists. So, I mean, we're all a bunch of sensitive people, and but we all do have different personalities. I mean, some definitely some people are full on extroverts. I'm, I'm more of an introvert. But, and I, I, you know, so actually I'm quite thrilled most of the time that I don't have to leave the house or yeah. drive anywhere <laughs> to tell you the truth. Although, yeah, now it's kind of like, oh, I do, but I do love a, an audience and, and, and just being with musicians yeah. and working. Yeah. 
I, that's kind of my thing. I, I'm more of a like, let's get in there and do our gig and have a good time. And I'm, I like to do that rather than just stand around and make small talk, you yeah. know, like at a party, you know, just set, go to a party and sit and make small talk. I, I'm better off like working and doing things with people. Yeah. But mm, it's, I'm, you know, I'm with you a hundred percent on that. I'm, I'm <laughs> yeah. a total introvert too, but, but again, love the doing yeah. things with people. You know? Yeah. 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 And Instacart has changed my entire life forever. Oh yeah. Have you What's used Instacart? Instacart? No. It's uh -uh. it's you pretty much order your groceries and they oh, them shoot. to you. Uh-oh. I may never leave the house. I mean, I've actually gone weeks without actually leaving the house. So <laughs> but I should do that. <laughs> I'm all like, okay, we're gonna go out at the house. But Instacart, okay. <laughs> yeah. You gotta check. But you out. have children. I yes. always say that. People with children, you have an excuse. Yeah. I, Children oh, yeah. aren't awesome to bring to the grocery store. It's not, no. it's not the best thing. <laughs> no, not at all. How are you dealing with them being at school? I mean, or not being at school or at that school? They're, um, so they're being homeschooled right now. And um, I feel like, okay, I mean, it was, it was nuts to begin with. It was absolutely nuts. And my husband and I always openly say that we are not great at this. This was not, right. you know, so we always try to reassure the kids that it's not, it's not you, it's us, <laughs> you know, right. like, this isn't our calling in life to like, you know, do this, but we're in a really yeah. good place now though. We've really fallen into a great place with the routine, the curriculum. Um, my next door neighbor is a retired school teacher. And so she is helping us and she takes my older daughter, um, every day and, oh, and works nice. on her programs a little more intense. And so she works on it with her. And, and so, um, we're in a good place with it. I, I wish that I, I wish they were able to interact with kids more right yeah. now. You know, that would be, yeah. that's really, I think the biggest problem right now, but, um, yeah, but we're doing good. We're yeah. Doing good. That's tough. Yeah. Teaching is not for the weak of heart <laughs> teaching children <laughs> and, and oh my gosh and, and the element and then I've heard some of it's just wacky like it takes it's like 10 steps to log into something and oh God. that should have <laughs> just been like a zoom link and yeah I I'm know. like I wouldn't have made it that that far either <laughs> yeah. I could barely get the zoom link <laughs> to remember that <laughs> so <laughs> it's nutty it's really nutty but we're doing good, we're doing good. yeah yeah, yeah. Well, thank you so much for doing this. It's so great to see your face and talk Aww, with you. And my pleasure. Yeah, thank you. Time. Yeah, absolutely. It was really fun. Where can everybody find your music? They can find me on Spotify under Sarah Ingram. Just look up Sarah, S-A-R-A-H, Ingraham mm -hmm. on Spotify. And um, my website, which needs to be updated now. That's mostly just about my, you know, playing out and about like um, jazz videos and top mm -hmm. 40 videos and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, we'll be at Corona Cella SD November 15th. So mm -hmm. check us out that day. All the great players and singers, songwriters will be there. Yes. Um, so it should be fun. Yeah. 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 I'll definitely link to that. And that'll be, so that's a Sunday and that'll be the night before the pandemic proof singer summit starts. So. Oh, perfect. Fire what time up is that? Your... I want to tune into that. Is that, will that be an all day thing? The pandemic? Oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's going to be a three day event. Fine. Uh, My 16th, Tuesday, 17th, 18th. And there's, okay. um, 25 plus speakers. They're like top industry professionals. Incredible, incredible people nice. they are going to be talking about all kinds of different things. Um, you know, everything from <clears throat> sync licensing to your emotional well-being, vocal nice. training, all, all things vocal, all things that you need for, you know, to keep your vocal life in order and kind of, <laughs> you know, working <laughs> work again. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they're like somebody's like so would you be well i'm like oh gosh i better hurry up and start practicing like, uh, yeah. now <laughs> like, uh. oh my gosh I there's know. nothing like a gig to make you have to practice right mm -hmm. seems to be the only the only thing <laughs> that works for light me. a fire under you that's for sure yes. <laughs> yeah. well i'm excited for the pandemic um proof singer workshop that sounds yeah. really great 
Yeah, definitely. I hope well, people will definitely check sure. that out. Cool. Well, I will put up links to Corona Cella and to your um, website or, or your, do you, are the, you more an Instagram lady or Facebook lady? Uh, kind of both, I guess. Both. Okay. Yeah. Well, both up there then. Okay. okay. Yeah. All links to Sarah, but thank you so much. It was great to see you. And oh, it's yeah. great to see you too. Hopefully we'll see each other in person soon. I know. I always wonder, is everybody just going to maul each other when they see each other? Well, I mean, yeah. you've, you've had some with your band with the, with the mighty untouchables. Did you guys just attack each other? No, we, Oh, we, <laughs> yeah. you're not supposed to. <laughs> uh, we, you know, the guys, the guys are all real, you know, conscientious about, you know, what's going on, but we, um, we had a great time. I mean, it's just, just kind of like great to be in everybody's space. Yeah. And, and, you know, when we, we meet, like every so often um, on Zoom for band meetings and stuff. And, and I just, I just sit there and just seeing all their faces together, just definitely warms my heart, but yeah, you know, I do love a musician, yes. love musicians. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> good people, good people. All right, you good night for now. All right. We will see you soon and good night to all of you for what, thanks for watching. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Danielle. You're welcome. Bye.